boys that got here just in the nick of time. What does that make us? Big damn heroes, sir. Ain't we just? Ah, those wacky creationists. Just when you think they've all been pwned out of existence or sent to jail for tax fraud, one of them turns up with some more crazy bullshit that you just can't leave alone. It's like having a strawberry seed caught in your teeth. You know it's not hurting anything, but boy, does it drive you crazy. This time it's this fella Red Sky who's trotted out some guy who claims to be a PhD. Well, in this case, in the immortal words of Bob Hope, PhD stands for Pinheaded Dope. Not only do they claim that the Earth is the center of the universe, they go one step further and actually claim that the Earth itself does not rotate. Now, in supposed support of this position, they cite a number of misunderstood, misinterpreted, and outright discredited physics experiments which they claim disproves Einstein and his theory of relativity. Well, I'm not going to go into that part of it because there are people who have done a much better job than I could of destroying those arguments against Einstein. But what I can do is completely and utterly destroy this notion that the Earth does not rotate. In fact, it's this outrageous lie that forms the entire basis of their geocentric argument. And so if it falls, the rest of the entire argument collapses like a gigantic house of cards. Now, when confronted with some basic facts about the Earth revolving, and traveling around the sun, they ironically call on Einstein to try to save them by citing his equivalency principle. In other words, they use mathematical semantics to try to hide the fact that their theory is utter bullshit. They try to say that because Einstein says that there is no objective frame of reference, that they can use this to show that the earth does not turn and that it does not go around the sun in accordance with biblical prophecy. Well, that fails. The question of whether the Earth turns or not is not merely a matter of mathematical semantics. The Earth's rotation is a proven fact that has non-trivial effects on all of our lives. Allow me to demonstrate this with the Coriolis effect, which is probably one of the easiest consequences of the Earth's rotation to both observe and understand. This is the Earth as seen from outer space. The equator is the yellow line, and the North Pole is the red pole at the top. Now imagine our good friend Bill Nye the Science Guy standing on the equator. Because we know that the Earth rotates once every 24 hours, and we know the circumference of the Earth to a very high degree, we know that Bill is traveling at slightly over 1,037 miles per hour to the right. He has to be traveling at this speed in order to complete one revolution every 24 hours, just as though he was riding on a carousel horse. And he would have to be traveling at the same speed as the carousel horse, otherwise he would fall off. Now let's say the bill begins to travel towards the North Pole. As a consequence of another directly observable law of physics, Newton's conservation of momentum, Bill would continue to travel at 1,037 miles per hour to the right. Bill's intention is to travel up this red line directly towards the North Pole as seen from his perspective. However, because he's traveling to the right at 1,037 miles per hour, if he does nothing, his actual path of travel will be this green line. It will deflect to the right and he will miss his target. Because the target is halfway between the equator and the North Pole, the circumference of the Earth there is half the size it is at the equator. Therefore, the speed of the target is half the speed it would be at the equator, or a little over 518 miles per hour. And so because Bill is traveling from west to east at roughly twice the speed of his target, his actual path across the ground carries him to the right of his target, even though he set off in a due north direction. This is the Coriolis effect in action, a consequence of the Earth's rotation that has directly observable effects on the weather, aviation, and other aspects that touch all of our lives. Now, Red Sky and his geocentrist pinhead seem to think that the entire universe is mounted in what is called the luminiferous ether, and that this ether revolves around the Earth once every 24 hours, exactly as if it was sitting in the middle of a drain. And they abuse the experiments of Michelson and Morley to try to prove this. However, the only thing that is going down the drain around here is their theory. You see, 
If you try to use the luminiferous ether to try to explain the apparent motion of the sun around a static earth once every 24 hours, then you lose the ability to show that the luminiferous ether also causes the Coriolis effect. You see, the two explanations were required that the luminiferous ether is traveling at two different velocities in two different places, and that makes the entire theory fall apart. Because that would mean that the velocity of the ether depends on the point of view of the observer, in which case you're right back to Einstein. Now, of course, it's mathematically possible to try to show that the luminiferous ether is causing the Coriolis effect. But that would mean that we would observe the Coriolis effect throughout the universe, and we don't. Witness this beautiful ballet. The dot traveling around the circle is a single GPS satellite traveling in a near polar orbit. If the luminiferous ether was present, then we should observe a Coriolis effect on the orbit of this satellite. But the simple fact is that we don't. His motions are exactly as described by Einstein and Newton. Take a look at the band of dots near the equator in this animation. Those are geostationary satellites. These are satellites that orbit the Earth once every 24 hours and so appear to hover above a particular spot on the Earth, hence their name. While it may be possible to explain these satellites in a geocentric model, it is not possible to explain one in a static Earth model. The static Earth model would require that the satellites are not subject to the laws of gravity once they leave the Earth. However, that theory is blown out of the water by the existence of the GPS satellite, which is clearly being held in orbit by the Earth's gravitational pull. So under Red Sky's model, the Earth does not rotate, and the apparent motion of objects in space is caused by the motion of the luminiferous ether. Since the Coriolis effect is directly observable, it follows that under Red Sky's theory, the ether must explain the Coriolis effect because the Earth does not rotate. If the ether were responsible for the Coriolis effect, then the Coriolis effect should have a measurable effect on the motion of objects throughout the solar system. Earth orbiting satellites do not show any Coriolis effect. Therefore, the Coriolis effect must be produced by the Earth's rotation and not the ether. If the Earth rotates, then the geocentric and geostationary model proposed fails. If I'm your mission, Shepard, best give it up. You're welcome on my boat. God inked. <laughs>